Hello, welcome back to another How to Blog. Uh, today is it's another Sunday, and uh, I've just had my lunch. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good to go. I've got power. I've got strength. Now this one uh, today we're going to make. So we're going to do two videos today. The first one. This is the first one. Then you can have a look at the second one below. Below it. Uh, but this video is dedicated to my uh, sister-in-law, uh, Fafa. If you're watching this. You've asked me many times how to make this, and you say it's never turned out the way I make it. So now is your time to watch this, when you watch it, if you watch it, so you always have it. Anyway, simple spaghetti bolognese, but tasty, so it always tastes good. That's what you want. Now you can add things to it, you know, chefs add things to it. I'm just going to keep it simple, okay, nice and simple, so you can do what you like with it. So. This is going to be for four people, four and a half people. So you need half a kilo of mince. Now, this mince is beef mince, of course. Um, I'm not sure you can use anything else but for this, but you could use beef mince. Half a kilo. So one, two, three, four. So you have four people there, okay? So you're going to bung that in. Like that. Plop. Now, with that, you're going to need and a big onion. The big onion there, see? So we're going to cut that. Now, I'll show you how to cut another one. It's a bit, wait, it's a bit blunt again. So, so I'll show you just how to quickly cut this, this onion up. You've probably seen me do it before in other videos, but. For fafa. For, for fafa, yes. She cuts it, I think, I can't remember, she cuts it a different way, but there we are. Uh, Okay, so you need your nice, nice sharp knife. You can't do it without a sharp knife. So you hold the onion that way. So that's there's the onion like that. See, you cut it in half, put it like that. So you cut it down this way. So you cut it. You don't have to cut it super super fine. Keep your fingers like that, straight down. So you can't cut. You can't. It's impossible to cut your fingers. Look, if like that, how can you cut them? Impossible. So. How you chop it is up to you, but you don't have to chop it super fine. So that goes in there like that. Big onion, remember? Big, big onion. Can't do it with that big onion. Again, the other one. Okay, turn it round. Like that. I would say that's a medium chop. So, anyway. You don't have to do it as fast as that or as neat as that. So we just do it safely when you've got the knife. It's not really for job for uh, children, you know, that are sort of less than teenagers really, chopping onions. Don't give the little ones that think that sort of job. Why don't we get rid of this onion skin? Right, I'm gonna put the we're gonna put this this thing on a medium heat this ring. Right, or medium gas or whatever. Now, the reason is we're not going to fry the mince. Do not fry the mince. We're going to make sure that the mince is changes colour from pink or red or whatever. The colour is just too, so it loses its colour. That's all we're going to do. We're not making fried mince. We're making spaghetti bolognese. So some people they cook, they cook. It too much at this point, and this is where the flavour develops here at this point, in my opinion. So, if you need to make this in a hurry, you can, but just stop doing this stage too quickly. So now we're going to go in with some garlic. How much? You can't make spaghetti bolognese without garlic. We well, can, but it's not going to taste of anything. So, now, how much garlic do you need? I would say, and this is just my opinion, but it always, always, always works, one clove of garlic per person and one for the pot. So, you've got, there's, there's five cloves of garlic there, see? Five cloves of garlic, so one for each person, one for the pot, okay? So then, we're going to just top and tail it like that, and crush it with the back of the knife like that. You can get somebody else to do this, because, um, uh, if you want, you got other things to do. Um, but we're going to fast forward this now so that you don't get 
bored with uh, watching me do this. Okay, look, I'll show you what this garlic, look. For those of you who are uninitiated, well this is not top quality garlic, I'll admit. I bought it, it's not, you know, it's eco brand kind of thing. Now if you see that bit, that in it, don't chuck it out the whole thing, just cut it out a little bit if you want to. That doesn't make any difference. Just cut it out a little bit. So there's another one there. It says when it's been growing, it's been attacked by an insect. But that looks, if you find it's a little bit green there, don't worry about it so much, you know. That's, I mean, if you buy top quality garlic, it's going to cost you a lot. And um, you wouldn't have that issue, but it's, that's perfectly good. So, five garlics, one for each person, one for the pot. Now, what we're going to do now, we're going to use a garlic press. Get one of these. I always use one, always handy. Use one almost every day. Not when I'm making ice cream, but when. So put, just keep loading up. There's no, there's no point scraping it after every one. Just keep loading it up and do the scraping at the end. If you find that sometimes that your hinge breaks here, this hinge here. See that hinge? That's a raw plug. I fixed it up. I had a raw plug. Just shove that in there, and we'll fix it again. So. The hinge is sometimes the weakest point. I mean, if you want to buy a nice stainless steel uh, pair of uh, yeah, garlic cr crosses, then fine, great. You know, they never break, but this one is uh, an eco, eco version. Right. So, we're going to give that a little whiz around like that. So, what we've got in here, we've got a medium heat ring like that, see? We've got garlic in there, a big, big old onion, a half, a half a kilo of minced uh, beef. What next, I hear you say. Well, we're going to put some scratching of pepper in there, uh, salt in there like that. This is black pepper. You're going to have to use ground black pepper, but some sort of pepper is good. Okay, now, well, what we're waiting for here is for the mince to turn colour. So lose its redness. Lose its redness. Okay. Like that. Now, I haven't added any liquid there at all, look, see, no, no liquid at all. Don't put anything there with it. Keep the ring on medium. Okay, what we're going to go in with now? We're going to go in with a tin of tomato. Now, I opened this one yesterday, and I only used half of it. So we're going to use the other half in there. So we're going to even go with a tin of tomatoes. It's probably just less than a tin. Okay, we're going to put a little bit of water in there from the can. Now these are whole tomatoes, you just cut them up. You don't have to buy chopped tomatoes. Don't, you have to buy chopped tomatoes. And you can use fresh tomatoes in here as well. I got some there that from my garden, but I had those for lunch. I got some others, but I'm going to keep those for another recipe for tomorrow. So, the best thing to use here is a tin tomatoes. So, now it's just spaghetti bolognese. Okay. Now we're gonna we're gonna add some tomato puree. All right. This is 140 grams in there. But forget about the gram bit. It's this size. So where well, you can fit in your wrist like that. So in your hand like that. So the whole tin is gonna go in. The whole tin. So one. Two. If you haven't got a whole tin, use kind of like more or less a whole tube. But, um, you got to have you got to have this much of. I can't explain it. It was three tablespoons, three heaped tablespoons. Three heaped tablespoons. Three heaped tablespoons. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So there we are. Waste not, want not. Get all the bits out from from there. Uh, okay, so let's give this a whiz round. Okay, so that's the ingredients so far. Now, what I normally do, and you can do, and you're not cheating at all. You're not cheating at all by doing this, I'll show you. Right, so that's the ingredients so far. Quick, isn't it? Not too bad. I don't know how long long has been going since uh, we started this, but... Uh, about nine minutes. About nine minutes. Okay, now we need paprika. Paprika, ka, ka, ka. This is all with, this is ordinary, um, it's ordinary, nothing smoked or spicy, just ordinary paprika. How much? How much paprika? 
I would say a heat tablespoon, like that. Oh, you think, oh, that's a lot. It's not. Okay? Heat tablespoon. And that'll give it the richness that you need. It's already looking and smelling really good. Yeah. Okay. Now you could at this point add a stock cube as well, just for extra measure. Now what stock cube can you add? You can add anything you like really. Be beef one is good if you've got one. You can add chicken one. One that's uh, not not particularly flavoured in any particular way. It's kind of like a. You can add a um, a vegetable one, but don't add um don't add a uh, a fish one. If you've got a fish one, I don't put it in there. It doesn't taste right. So eventually, you can get the stock cube open, right? So we've got in there the stock cube, right? So now we need a bit more water in there. So, a cup full of water, or thereabouts. Because what happens is the tomato puree and the, the paprika um, thicken it up, so you could need to put some water in. How much water? It's got to look like this soup to start with. See, so look. Got to look like that. Think, oh, that's too much water. It's not, because it will go when you cook it. So, start off with that. Now, what happens now is you cook that on a simmer. I like to call it a low bubble. A low bubble, which means lid on, always lid on, put it on number one. That's it. Now, leave it there for an hour. Check on the water if you want to, liquid, but it should be alright. I mean, I would check on it after half an hour. But a low bubble, half an hour, half an hour minimum. Maybe you can give it two or even three hours, if so much the better. I would say after two hours it will be perfect. Okay? Now, with the, with the ingredients, you can put other things with it. You can put some little like, peppers in there, or, or, or celery, or, you, you know. Could you put wine little, in it? You can, yeah, you could put wine in it, and now is the time to put the wine. Don't put the wine in at the end, but you put the wine in now. I think they call that some, something else. But anyway, just be careful. I'd start off with a basic recipe, and then uh, see how you like see it. How you like it. Paprika-wise, yeah, that was a lot of paprika in there. We like it that way. You may not, you can use half that amount or a quarter of that amount, it doesn't matter. But the ingredients are, the three, the three things that give it the, the flavour is, the, is the, onion, the big onion, the garlic, and the tomato puree, and uh, to a lesser extent, the stock cube, and the beef. But it works. In the end, you'll get a, a something that tastes good. What do you serve it with? I've got a garlic recipe, a, a garlic recipe? A garlic bread recipe, which I'll include down. Butter, that's always that's a popular one and you serve it with well because I can't eat pasta or I haven't got any gluten-free pasta I'm gonna have that with rice tonight but you serve it with pasta spaghetti you know, a long spaghetti you know or any other shape of spaghetti that you need and parmesan on top oh and parmesan you know the well we're talking of parmesan you can get parmesan in two varieties well you can get it three varieties you can buy the big block you know, you buy the big block at the, the, the deli or cheese counter or whatever, and you grate it up. But you can also, if, you, if you're lucky, you can find parmesan that is chunky like that, sure which is great you. for salad and it's good for this stuff as well. Okay, so you don't have to have it finely grated. That creates a bit more interest as well, I think, when you serve it up for someone who's never seen it. And you can also, if you have got a big piece of parmesan from a, from a cheese counter, you can use uh, the box grater here just to, just to cut it up chunky, chunky slightly. So it's up to you. So, there we have it, that's the spaghetti bolognese. Um, I'm sure we'll show you a picture of it um, when, it's, when it's finished cooking. And uh, until next time, if you'd like to subscribe, uh, you can do so down here. There's more recipes here. There's some quick tips up here and some um, uh, DIY jobbies down the bottom here. So until next time.